six-year-old Ronnie Lane, dressed in his cowboy outfit, would take his little ukulele to the bus stop and play for the passengers. Half an hour was enough to fill his pockets with pennies. Ten years later, he progressed to guitars and rock and roll. He'd grown precious few inches, though. Then, on the 23rd of January, 1965, Ronnie Lane and his mate Kenny Jones went into a music shop in Manor Park to buy a bass guitar. They were served by the Saturday boy, Steve Marriott. Steve sorted out a deal on a Harmony H22, an act of generosity which later got him the sack. In return, Ronnie invited Steve to a gig he and Kenny were playing that night at the Earl of Derby, a pub in Bermondsey. The pub was heaving. The band was one of many Ronnie was involved with. Under various names and with different personnel, they came together and fell apart. To warm up, Ronnie and Steve laid into the whiskey, a drink with which neither was particularly familiar. After a couple of numbers, Ronnie invited Steve onto the stage. He took over. He channeled Jerry Lee Lewis, pounding on the piano with hands, feet and arse. Everything we did swung like Henratty, he said. The pub piano, however, disintegrated. The landlord pulled the plug. The other members of the band were livid with Ronnie and Kenny for encouraging this piano-wrecking incubus and drove off in the van, leaving them stranded. Ronnie, Steve and Kenny sat in the gutter next to Kenny's drum kit and Ronnie's amp and bass. They started to laugh. A little at first and then hysterically. It was going to be all right. They were a band, it was obvious. A band like no other. They were on their way. Ronnie, Kenny and Steve were all wartime runts, short of stature and undernourished. But they acquired enough in the way of haircuts and sharp trousers to pass as uber mods, faces. So when they started gigging in the East End of London, they called themselves the Small Faces. Their lucky break, or nasty setback, depending on how you look at it, came when they were spotted by the notorious Don Arden, an impresario who took no prisoners. Arden signed the small faces to a dodgy contract, secured them a record deal with Decca, and made sure their first single, What You Gonna Do About It, got enough airplay and hype. Baby alligators were always guaranteed to shift product for it to go top 20. More hits followed. All or Nothing, written by Ronnie and Steve, went to number one. Mr Arden put them to work on a relentless tour schedule. For the next three years, we were a top teeny screen band, Ronnie said. We worked seven nights a week. The Small Faces were very much a band you'd go to and wet your knickers at. Eventually, the Small Faces noticed that, despite the punishing workload and massive chart success, they were broke. After a lot of argy-bargy, they left Mr Arden and signed with the Rolling Stones manager, Andrew Lou Goldham, and his newly formed record company, Immediate, with its perplexing slogan, A New Record Company of Tomorrow, Today. Still more hits like Lazy Sunday and Ichiku Park followed, culminating in a concept album, Ogden's Nut Gone Flake, which went to number one in the album chart. From here on, the only way was down. Riffs began to appear, particularly between Ronnie and Steve, until one night, Steve walked off stage in a huff and never really came back. And once again, all the money had disappeared. For the full story, read Any More For Any More, out on the 17th of August, 2023.